All right. So the title of the talk is a bit of uh, contradicting, right? Free open source enterprise malware analysis. Usually the enterprises keep this propriety. Uh, but I feel like there's uh, quite some open source tools out there that can help, especially aspiring analysts or those who are independent on a budget, students, startups. Uh, I mean, a lot of the stuff that we use is not cheap. Uh, scaling is hard as well, uh, or so it might seem. So, table of contents, uh, first a brief slide about me, then some of the goals and expectations that we have here. The title can raise various questions, but not necessarily all of them uh, are what I set out to, to answer. And then I want to talk about the malware pipeline itself, collections, detections, manual analysis, and some resources, including some seamless shelf promotion and some time for Q&A. So uh, about me, uh, my name is Max Kirsten. I go by the nickname of Libra. Uh, you can reach out to me on any of these handles uh, afterwards if you have questions uh, or reach out to me at the conference or gala tonight. Uh, I work for Trellix in the advanced research team and we do malware analysis. I think that's the, the TLDR here. Now, for the goals and expectations, uh, premium services often provide you with premium quality uh, that you would expect. Now, you don't necessarily need to use those tools, but there's often a trade-off versus the time you need to invest versus what you can get if you pay money, assuming you have that money and you make revenue. Having said that, these are obviously only accessible if you pay your premiums. Now, I don't want to discredit any service uh, that exchanges a service as a subscription uh, in any way, shape, or form. And I think that a lot of them, if not all, do a good job. Uh, I will mention some of the free and open source services here, uh, but I want to preface this by saying that I have no affiliation here. This is merely my personal view on this, and your view might differ. Uh, feel free to contribute, uh, so I think we can all benefit from that but don't see this as an, as an advertisement for something I am affiliated with. Now, the goals and expectations, uh, what I usually use as a benchmark is the Raspberry Pi I have laying under my desk, uh, which is old. It's a Raspberry Pi 3B. Uh, just as a reference, it has one gigabyte of memory. And what I was aiming for is roughly a 60-day sample retention period. So you would need to have the storage for that. The goal here is that you can run this locally at home. If you're a student, startup, a researcher, doesn't matter too much. And you can run this 24 seven. You're not ending up with a high uh, electricity bill because it's just a small device. And you also don't need to pay a lot of money to either obtain it uh, or something similar. Um, and I want to talk about the traffic light protocol because I feel like this is one of the biggest caveats that people in the, well, in the industry or want to get into the industry uh, have. Now, for those unaware, the traffic light protocol, or TLP, is often what's uh, how you rate your information. So if I were to make this talk TLP red, uh, which is the highest rating, it would mean that it wouldn't be recorded and you would not allow, be allowed to, uh, well, the information should never leave this room. Obviously, it does when you leave the room, but you're not allowed to say, hey, Max gave this talk about, uh, you can only vaguely reference it and use it. Now, there is more information about this. On top of my head, I believe the TLP is from uh, the first organization. Uh, at least they have documentation on it. And you have information that ranges from TLP Clear, which is just information you can find on the web, um, and anything between red and clear. There are several versions. Now, in my work at Tralix, uh, there is information that I don't publish as soon as I get it, and I use that. Prime example being the RTM blog that I had. Uh, I've been sitting on that for quite some time to do more research and not get that into the public. Because getting it into the public does mean informing other analysts uh, and helping the, the security industry as a whole, but it also means that an actor can read that blog and simply change their malware, update it, or fix anything I point out. However, if you're learning, if you're just starting out, you don't need the secrecy around it. You can reuse anything that's online available if you just assume that whatever you're doing is okay to be shared with the world. If you're new to malware analysis and you're just, how does ransomware work? You don't need your sample to stay hidden for months because very likely you're already basing your work on a public sample. 
So if you assume that your information doesn't need to, be, to remain secret, or your samples don't need to remain secret, you can have a wide variety of tools at your disposal that you can use. Now, for the pipeline itself, uh, obviously in the end you need to do manual analysis, right? You need to verify your results one way or another. And uh, that's why in here you do not focus on the malware analysis, on the manual analysis yet. Um, that will come later, but for now you want to just uh, make a rough shift between what's interesting, what's not interesting to you. So there could be anything that's malicious, it could be a very specific thing. Now the community itself makes a lot of rules uh, and patterns for you to work with, ranging from Yara rules to any other kind of detection you can work with uh, and set up locally. So you can reuse this, learn from both what you see but also apply it, which gives you practical experience as well. Uh, but there's no need for you to make everything on your own and reinvent the wheel. So the understanding of getting this, uh, this data and, and using it doesn't mean that you need to have a beefy hardware setup. You can simply scale by outsourcing. And if you outsource to a cloud service that you rent, that can be really expensive. But you can also outsource to cloud services that provide this information for you. And that gives you two advantages. If you use such services and you have that information, you share it again with the community. So you give back to the community that you also well, take from, if you will. But also you use the resources that they offer. We'll get to that in a minute. So we're talking about resources, but the resources we're using to do something, we're going to collect something. And what are we going to collect? Um, there are an overwhelming number of fresh samples. If you take premium sample feeds and just look at what they produce daily. If you're just getting out there and, and want to learn how to do malware analysis, you don't need all the fresh samples in the world. You technically only need one. Now the problem is how do you get that one sample that you're interested in and that is interesting? You need more samples because if you knew exactly what you needed from the get-go, uh, you have a magic crystal ball and would probably be better off buying a lottery ticket that is the winning ticket. So you don't need that, but what you do need is some samples to base on trends, see what is out there and just uh, ride in between, search what you need. Now. If you use, let's say, public services for this, you have services such as MalShare, which provides some metadata on files, but also free access. Uh, you can do 2,000 API requests per day. And as I state in the top of the slides, please adhere to rate limits and fair use. So some of the uh, services have a number of requests you can make. Don't make 2,000 threads and launch them all at once at MalShare. Just be... Uh, be conservative and, and think of others that would like to use the service as well. Uh, then there's, for example, Malware Bazaar. Uh, you need a Twitter account, which is free, and you can use any data you want to register. Uh, well, is it free? It's kind of a hot topic now. Um, but uh, you, you can contact the service afterwards with it. Uh, there's an API rate limit on this, uh, so you cannot really spam it, but they allow, for example, to download recent samples of the last day or last hour that you can fetch periodically and then use locally. And then there's Malpedia. Daniel uh, gave a, a talk earlier today. He's one, on top of my head, one of the founders or at least moderators there. Uh, so if you're here and you would like uh, an invite, then I'm just going to say, they, yeah, okay, he's nodding, yeah, you can come to him. Uh, so maybe that's a busy gala for you tonight. You do need a vouch from an existing member, or I think you need to meet Daniel, uh, who is obviously an existing member. But they have a malware corpus that he explained as well. So they have a public uh, library of blogs and resources that you have, but you can also find malware uh, once you have a registered account. And they have unpacked and packed versions of the malware. They have uh, coming back again to the traffic light protocol, TLP clear rules on the website, just publicly available, but you have more rules once you're registered, which you can use for scanning, etc. cetera. Um, then there's a sandbox, uh, triage. I think it's now part of Recorded Future, they, they got bought. Uh, but there's free access for non-commercial usage, so individual researcher, uh, researchers uh, can use that. And the sandbox itself allows you to do dynamic execution on scale, but they also have configuration extractor, uh, extracting 
um, capabilities, so you can harvest those as well from samples. Now, if you were to combine all this, uh, you have your local setup. So you attach some external storage, or you have a big SD card in your Raspberry Pi or a machine. You can store the samples, and you can store your metadata in a database, so you don't need to query the API every time and again. You can use a folder structure which works for you for the sample. So let's say you have a year, month, and day where you can realize when you fetch something, uh, which allows you to easily delete old data. So if you have a 60-day retention period, you can just delete the folder. Uh, you can also do it for a, uh, a year and then the day of year, so day one, day two, day three, uh, just to keep track of how old your data is and depending on how much you want to save. As for detections, uh, you want to optimize your YAR rules. Dominica gave a good talk about that today as well as last year. Uh, the last year one is already on YouTube, and this one will be on YouTube in the future, as will this talk be. And you can offload the scanning to a public uh, platform such as Yarify. Uh, Yarify is also part, just like uh, Malware Bazaar from uh, Buse.ch, and you can upload your YAR rules there, but you can also upload samples, which are then scanned not only for your rules, but others. And if somebody else has a rule that triggers, they'll get an alert too. So it benefits the whole community. And then for the malware, uh, for the manual malware analysis, uh, you have several tools listed in well, no particular order here. Um, so you have Jira, which I personally find very useful. Uh, you have Cutter, which is based on Ryzen, but then with a GUI or Ryzen if you prefer the command line interface. Uh, Ida Free or Home, which is about a dollar a day, I think for the license, um, and those are man mainly for, let's say, native binaries, so C, C++, Rust, Golang. Uh, but if you have something in .NET, you can use the free and open source tool, dnspyx, and for Java and Android, you can use JetX. Now, obviously, there are more tools. This is not an exhaustive list, but once you find something that your rules match on, and you don't need a rule necessarily for a specific family, but you can also look for specific techniques in binaries, uh, you can look into the binary. Uh, so you've gone from having not to pay a lot, I would argue, uh, to collect your malware, do the detections on a scale, get a lot of metadata, do the sandbox execution. And this mimics what a lot of companies have in-house, but then not outsourced to public platforms where you share everything. But if you want to do this as a learning experience, that's really helpful. So. What you can still do to further automate is you can run some tools headless. So let's say you have an interesting file and you were to use Jira, you can use Jira headless to do the analysis for you. You then set up a notification when it's done. So by the time you get out of the shower or you are done doing groceries, you can directly get behind your computer, open Jira, and you don't even need to wait for the initial analysis to start, which I guess saves you even more time, uh, especially if you have a lack of time. Now, resources do not reinvent the wheel, and this is where the shameless self-promotion comes in. Uh, I have a website where I have a free binary, a binary analysis course, which guides you step-by-step step along the way, uh, where I try to explain why certain steps are taken rather than just that they are taken. Um, use API client libraries that you have available. I have a few on my website, but I do know that I am one of the very few who prefers Java. Uh, so if you, I see somebody in the audience go, ah. If you like Java, then these are for you. But I mean, if you search on, on, on Google for, uh, let's say, Malware Bazaar Python client, uh, you will find one. So that saves you a lot of time as well if you want to set something up and automate. You don't have to do everything on your own. And you can collaborate with a community. Maybe you can make a rule and somebody else as well, and then suddenly you've covered two families instead of one. And if you think of this on a bigger scale, then... Uh, you can do even more. So those are some resources. Uh, I'll tweet some links out as well, probably before the gala, uh, after the lightning talks. Uh, if you have any questions or tips, uh, then feel free to reach out uh, on any of these, Twitter, Mastodon, or LinkedIn. And I uh, hope you will enjoy the lightning talks and gala. Okay, we can take one question. Come on. 
and it was either very clear or very unclear. <laughs> we'll go with that, uh, with being clear. Okay, thank you.